we won the uh, best award from Daniel Drug during Q3 for the technology and innovation. We made a state of art driver information system for Daniel Drug. Slide number two, what you see is the best quality performance with uh, one of our big OEMs, KCB. And on the third slide, you see an award from Tata Motors, the ED DWM Cup Assessment from Tata Motors. Also, a few select launches which we thought that we should highlight. Uh, you would have seen a couple of weeks back, Zero Motor Corp launching a series of their motorcycles. And uh, we are very proud partners with Zero to be a part of the driver information system launched in the ski uh, models. The left hand side top, what you see is an extreme 125cc motorcycle launched with our driver information system. And the top middle, whatever you see is uh, for the new model Magic. I'm sure that you would have written the papers. The launch has happened a couple of weeks back for their 440cc motorcycle. We have made a driver information system. And also the newly launched Tata Motor EV Punch. We have made again a state of our driver information system for Tata Motors, both for the EV vehicle and also for the IC engines. Switch mobility, we have done again a state of our driver information system. Switch mobility, you know that the EV division of uh, Ashok Taylor. And uh, the innovation award, whatever I showed uh, to you, uh, is the right one at, at, the, at the bottom. You see uh, the driver information system, whatever we designed uh, for it. Coming to connection, highlights are like for Q3 of FI24 ended up our EBITDA margins to that 12.51% from revenue from operations at 5,571.91 million. For the nine months of FI24, our EBITDA margin was at 12.55% and the total revenue was at 16,419.57 million. On the growth, on the revenue from operations, we have grown by 21.61% on a Q3 to Q3 comparison. And our EBITDA was, has grown by 34.09% during the same period. And for the nine month period, we have grown by 17.86% revenue from operations. And uh, on a nine month period of the EBITDA level, we have grown by 18.79%. Thank you. That finishes my presentation. Over to you for the question and answer. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on their touchstone telephone. If you wish, if you wish, if you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, and you, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use answers while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. Our first question is from the line of Bhal Chandra Vishwanath Shinde from Kotak Life. Please go ahead, sir. Uh, sir, uh, regarding the product launches wise, uh, uh, the, are we working on uh, e-cockpit uh, uh, with any customer and uh, uh, what, uh, what are the stages of development right now and uh, uh, can uh, uh, can we expect any uh, positive news on that front? Yes, thank you. Thank you for the question. Yes, we are working on the e-cockpit uh, with one of our major customers. Uh, the SOP is likely to start by SI26. Uh, being at, under NDA, I am not able to reveal the name of the OEM. Yes, you are right. We are working on the e-cockpit solution. But by when we can expect some news on that? 
See, the launch of the program is expected, as I told you, during FI26. Uh, during the time when you have the product getting launched, then we will tell you during that time that uh, this is the product that which model that we have launched for that customer. Okay. It is already under development. Okay. Okay. And uh, on the uh, TFT clusters wise, uh, means on the clusters wise, if you can give me mix uh, wise. Uh, how will be our mix right now? Uh, uh, how, uh, how much will be uh, normal analog and digi uh, then digital and uh, TFT cluster mix? And even on the two-wheeler, four-wheeler and uh, uh, commercial vehicle mix? See, see uh, whatever we have launched for DACVS is a LCD digital cluster. Uh, it has got both analog and digital. And whatever we have been launching for two-wheeler and some of the commercial vehicles uh, have got a mix of both on the uh, LCD type for instrument clusters and also TFT. As explained during some of our previous calls, uh, the, the tendency of the market is to move from LCD to TFT. That's what we see that it is happening. But it takes some time for the complete conversion to happen. If you remember like five years back, most of the instrument clusters, whatever we were supplying, were mechanical in nature. And then after the BS6 got implemented in 2020, the migration started from the mechanical to uh, you know, digital uh, electronic clusters. And now it is moving into the high-end digital electronics that is moving from LCD to TNT. And uh, how will be the mix for of two-wheeler, four-wheeler, uh, wise? Uh, mix in the sense of our revenue uh, to the yeah, revenue mix. Revenue mix, uh, especially in clusters. Cluster revenue, actually, if you go through the ACMA uh, production, two-thirds of the vehicle production uh, comes from the two-wheeler segment, as you are aware. Similarly, since we are balanced out and present in all segments of the market, is something very important because uh, we have mitigated the risk by being present in all segments of the market. You know that in Q3 the tracker segments were down. That is why some of the tier ones have a setback in terms of their revenue, primarily because if you are too much tracker dependent, there was a degrowth in tractor. That way we have de-risked our segments quite very well. So if you see that two-thirds of the uh, vehicle production in India comes from two-wheelers, our revenue and driver information system is also two-thirds of the total revenue comes from the two-wheeler segment. Okay. Commercial vehicle contributes to about 15% of our total revenue. And similar, if you match it with the ACMA, you will find that 15% of the vehicle production comes from the uh, commercial vehicle of the total production made. And about like 7 to 8% comes from personal passenger vehicle. This is an area that we are asking to penetrate more as we are going on, which I explained to you also in the previous earnings call. And the remaining are the tractors and uh, off-road vehicles. That is how we are going. Got it. And last question on the margins wise. Uh, we and have we given us. We joined the queue. I think there are a number of callers who are waiting. Can I please request you to please join the queue, please? Sure, sure. Thank you so much. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, please limit your question to one per participant. Should I have a follow up question, we request you to rejoin the queue. Our next question is from the line of Monica Arora from Sigent Advisor. Please go ahead. Yeah, thank you for the opportunity. Um, uh, I have some certain bookkeeping questions, like what is the uh, bifurcation of cluster and non-cluster business? And also I wanted to understand the segmental bifurcation. Uh, Monica, to give you a rough estimate on the bifurcation, the cluster business contributes to about 70% of the total revenue and the 30% comes from the non-cluster, uh, non-instrument business. Okay, on the segment wise, I think I just explained to uh, the previous caller about the segmentation, like two-thirds of our revenue coming from the two-wheeler and 15% coming from the uh, commercial vehicle and 5-7% to 7 comes from the uh, personal passenger vehicle and the remaining coming uh, from tractor and uh, off-highway segments. 
Okay. And so, what is the right between exports and domestic? Uh, currently, we stand at 10% of the total revenue uh, coming from export, primarily because there has been uh, some slowdown uh, both at uh, the US and Europe markets, and we hope uh, recovery to happen from uh, next year onwards. But regarding the project launches for export, we are on track. Okay, okay. And sir, would you be able to share the 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 rhythm margin for cluster business? Monica, can I please request to please uh, join the queue because there are a number of participants. Uh, if you don't mind, can you please okay. join the queue? Thank you, Monica. Thank you so much. Ladies and thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Please limit your question to one per participant. Should I have a follow up question, we request you to rejoin the queue. Our next question is from the line of Harni from Sundaram Alternates. Please go ahead. Uh, good evening, sir. Uh, so I just had one clarification on uh, whether are there any uh, uh, hindrances because of the electricity like, crisis on your uh, imports because I, uh, I I had a sense that your purchases are uh, majorly import-based. Uh, so do you have any uh, uh, hindrances because of the ongoing crisis? Well, I'm sure, sorry, uh, I think uh, we lost you uh, in between. You are you are not very audible. Can you be a little slow in, in your question? Uh, am I audible now, sir? Yeah, you are audible. Yeah. So I just wanted to check if there are any uh, uh, impacts because of the rescue crisis on your imports and your raw materials. Do you have any uh, issues over there? Uh, no. Actually, what happens is uh, because of the Red Sea uh, issue, uh, the, the logistics time has gone up by a couple of weeks. Uh, because it has to be rerouted. So what we are doing is we have started that rerouting and now it has come into dormancy. So we are not facing any issues currently because of the risk. Okay. Understood. Sure. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Our next question is from the line of Karan Gupta from One Million Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, Hello. Uh, your voice is not audible. Uh, hello. Is it better now? Please go ahead. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, my question is related to, as you said, we are moving from, you know, mechanical instrument cluster from digital, then PFT and high-end digital uh, instrument cluster. So, as the electronics part is going up in our instrument cluster. So as we, I mean, we are expecting this kind of thing, but margin will be impacting because the more electronics thing will be coming to our product. So our edge of manufacturing thing will be just to make the, you know, plastic models or the, you know, packaging materials of that instrument cluster. So we are seeing anything, we're expecting anything, the margin will be impacted in this thing. No, the margins will not be impacted, rather the margins will go up. If you see that more and more electronic clusters that we have been since 2020, our margins have been going up. Primarily, it is not just assembly alone. We do an end-to-end -end solution for the customer, starting from the design, development, manufacturing engineering, doing our own tools, and thereupon giving a complete end-to-end -end solution to the customer. So it is... The margins are just not depend on only the, the manufacturing or putting the plastics together and selling to the customer. It is the end-to-end -end solution that whatever we could give it to the customer is what he looks like. And then, thereupon, the margin gets improved. Okay. So, uh, so in this case, uh, use cases will, be, uh, will also be increased. So, I think the margin will not be impact. So, electronics part will increase. Software things also will increase. So in this case, uh, margin will not be affected, right? Yeah, yeah, in fact, I can explain to you a little differently. Like this, see, we are moving from a product-based company to a solution-based company. Okay, mm -hmm. uh, this is what we have explained in the few uh, earnings call also. Uh, if you are only doing a product using electronics, then your margins will will not be very high. Okay. 
but if you give a solution moving into like a technology product giving solution to the customer your margins are not under threat oh sure thank you that's it in my view yeah thank you thank you our next question is from the line of chirag jain from mk global finance services please go ahead yeah hi good afternoon sir uh, and congrats on very strong performance uh, so just a couple of questions one in terms of if you can share the thought process of getting into at the displays and ebs uh, sorry displays and and dms and any customer wins uh, on on these two product lines and probably from when we can see uh, revenues flowing in and second also in terms of our revenue guidance and margin guidance uh, by 26 uh, is there any revisit uh, in terms of uh, those numbers uh mr jain if i have understood uh, your question you asked about battery management system correct yes and also this breaks uh, broadly what is the thought process of getting into the, that category and also in terms of any customer wins order wins and and when we do see a uh, commercial production and probably uh, revenues getting reflected okay okay uh, very good jain i will uh, answer like this this break and uh, battery management system we are doing something as a, as a modularity uh, making like a common product across various people and customers you know that the two wheeler market is getting very fragmented so you know that we have started with like off the shelf driver information system where when you are able to offer as a off the shelf product uh i think a very very shorter lead time in terms of design and development and straight away it is like the customer can fit and then use the product that's what we have done it during the last one year for various uh, new age ev customers this break and battery management system is something which is under development uh in the, in the next 12 to 18 months we would be uh, launching those products for a number of uh, ev customers across the various two wheeler which will not only include uh, the what we call new age ev which is going to be the primary focus and also to our uh, traditional oems and uh, this is built on uh, the concept of modularity by which every time the customer need not keep uh, uh, designing the product right from the start Uh, with with very small minor modifications we would be in a position to offer to various customers i hope to see jane i have explained your question yeah uh, and any sense in terms of when it will start getting reflected on revenues uh, can we see in fy25 or it could be fy26 onwards uh majority of the, uh, the revenue in fact if you ask me for a full year revenue will start from fy26 uh but q4 of fy25 would be like starting of uh, no these businesses okay noted sir and any thoughts on the revenue and margin guidance uh, that we have shared for for three, three years prior to 26 uh it would be a little difficult for me to explain about how the uh, revenue and margin is going to be because this is a this is a new product it has been coming out very well uh, very much liked by our various uh, customers i'm sure that it will have a very very high potential to grow because more and more ev coming you would have seen uh, finance minister also has said in the budget yesterday that high focus is going to be given uh, on on the ev market i uh, expect a very very good revenue to happen from uh, next year on uh, these two products which are primarily made for ev uh, yeah, ev customers okay apologies i i was asking more from a company standpoint overall uh, i think we had given a guidance of for closer to 4000 crores uh, 34 to 3600 crores uh, in terms of organic guidance uh, and roughly about 13 and a half to 14 percent margin so uh, would that guidance broadly remains yeah our books have been in the direction of whatever our managing director has been giving us a suggestion uh but you have to uh, understand that uh, it depends upon the customer launches our order books have been very very strong uh, and we have been doing with uh, a number of projects in our basket of products whatever i have been explaining to you including our existing business and the new products whatever we are launching like battery management system and this brake and electrical oil pump and many more telematic solutions and many more so our order books are quite strong it, it depends upon uh, the customer launches and how the market is going to be 
Uh, if you recall, uh, during uh, this year, which is going to end up, uh, EV uh, vehicles had a lot of struggle in the market, uh, primarily because of certain uh, policies which govern the market, and uh, it, it went a little slow. Uh, those type of things are bound to happen. Otherwise, I think regarding the projects and the products, whatever we are offering to the customer, I think we are right on track. So, Jane, can we just move to the next caller, Jane? And if you have any further questions, you can just come in the queue. Thank you. Thank you. Our next question is from Vipul Kumar Shah from Sumangal Investments. Please go ahead. All right, sir. Thanks for the opportunity. Uh, my question is uh, regarding uh, uh, some time back we had uh, tied up with uh, uh, Cibros for uh, this cloud-based uh, uh, driver information system and end-to-end -end solutions. So what is the progress there? Cibros uh, solution is something that we have integrated uh, with our telematics, which is a part of the connected vehicle solution. Uh, currently, it is on the POC, we call proof of concept, uh, with various OEMs, like the battery management system and uh, the other products, whatever I just explained. So this is currently under testing with various OEMs, which will see some kind of uh, startup production happening by Q4 of the 25 and thereupon uh, more revenues coming during F526. So we have already done the internal POC with the Fibros integrated solution. It has come out quite well. And uh, the customers are quite confident about this integration. And now currently it is under POC with various customers. So, so this will help us in uh, increasing our uh, content per vehicle or it will, be, it will broaden our uh, offerings? So how it, how it will help us? Uh, it will definitely uh, do both. One is the content of the vehicle will increase because telematics as a product strategy uh, is going to have a very deep penetration into the new era of vehicle. You know that most of the EVs have got uh, uh, telematics inbuilt because you need to track many of the vehicle parameters including the battery performance. And we are also developing uh, battery telematics as well. Uh, for few of our customers. So telematics is going to be a large play as we are going to go. The primary that is where the market wants. So it is going to have a value addition in terms of our product portfolio. Uh, and also with Fibro integration, more and more we are going to have the connected vehicle solution offered to various customers. And last question, sir. This is uh, exclusive. No, no, this is related to this, this question only, so only one line question, if you allow. Yes, Mr. Bipal, please go ahead. Yeah, so this Cibro this tie-up is ex exclusive to us only, or they, they can tie up with other manufacturers also? Yeah, I will put it like this. It is, I will not use the word exclusive uh, for us, but the solution, whatever we are offering, along with the driver information system, see, that's why I said, this cannot be like isolated and seen only like a Cibro solution, exclusive or telematic. It is a complete bucket of solution that we offer to the customer as an end-to-end, -end, as a connected vehicle solution. And Cibro would be a part of it. Okay. So we have the driver information system connected with the telematic solution and having Cibro for the cloud. So it will be a combination of everything. So, uh, if you ask me exclusivity, it is not there, but if you see this kind of connected vehicle solution, whatever we are offering to the market, I think we will be rather very exclusive in whatever solutions we are giving to the customers. Thank you, Mr. Thank you, sir, for the detailed answer. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, please limit your question to one per participant. Should have a follow-up question, we request you to rejoin the queue. Our next question is from the line of Pius Jain, an individual investor. Please go ahead. Thank you for opportunity. Sir, I want to know in this quarter if we have got any new model order or we have uh, entered into any contract with any new uh, OEM or something. 
and 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 mention to this so earlier we used to show this we are doing this battery management system uh in sigros or something so nowadays the presentation are not showing anything on this so anything is going on this we are working on this or the revenue will come into from which time uh i i will just re explain whatever i explained like uh, in new product portfolio of recall starting from battery management system uh this take telematic solution with uh, sibros integrated solution then we are also doing for uh, ev vehicle uh, new era uh, uh cooling pumps and oil pumps Uh, for battery cooling application uh, in fact some of the new products like the battery cooling application ev coolant pumps already has been launched uh, recently during q3 uh, with uh, both tata motors and ashok leyland and going forward we expect more and more ev vehicle into uh, the, the commercial vehicle segment these products revenue will keep growing uh, regarding telematic solution uh battery management system uh, and also on uh, disc brake i explained that the likely sata production is going to be during q4 of fi25 and we will see more revenue coming into it during fi26 because it is under poc with the various customers at this point of time otherwise if you ask me about new customers we are been adding a number of new customers especially the new age ev players uh, in the indian market we have been keep adding customers where we are able to offer official products we have done a number of official products of driver information system to the new age uh, evs in the last two quarters and we will continue to offer these solutions to uh, new set of customers as well uh, for the ev these new products whatever i spoke will start sop from q4 of fi25 i hope that i will see you okay thank you sir thank you our next question is from the line of monica arora from share giant please go ahead yeah, thank you sir for giving me the opportunity again so uh, i wanted to ask two questions one is uh, what could be the profitability at the margins like tentative kind of at the margins for the clusters business so profitability for the clusters yes uh monica you are seeing the ebitda margins uh, whatever we have declared and you would have seen that like uh, two thirds of our revenue coming from instrument cluster so the answer is your question okay okay and so when last thing um who can be your like top five customers if you can say top five uh sorry if i understand your question you wanted to know our top five customers right yeah correct correct see primarily as i uh, explained to you that Two thirds of my production is coming from two wheeler, so naturally the top customers will come from the two wheeler, uh, starting from uh, TBS Motor, uh, Hero Motor Corp, the Judge, uh, Royal Enfield, and then um, Honda Motorcycles. We are working with all of them, Suzuki Motorcycles. All of them are our top-notch uh, uh, customers. And on the commercial vehicle, we have Tata Motors, Ashok Leyland, and Volvo Asia. It is. If you ask me, the revenue is in. what we produce uh, that is how we are aligned one is the market segmentation and also in terms of revenue that is the order in which uh, the revenues are there among the top customers uh, on the uh, off highway vehicle again jcb has got the largest market share and so is the revenue also with jcb uh, as the largest revenue on the off highway vehicle thank you so much sir for such an elaborate answer the next question is from the line of karan gupta from virinim capital please go ahead sir yeah thanks again uh so my question is related to the competition as we have you know, very less present in uh, passenger vehicle compared to our product range uh am i audible uh 
very audible. Can you just be a little slow on your question? Yeah, so my question is related to the competition part in passenger vehicle. As we have a less presence comparatively in our product range. So uh, in instrument cluster or in e-cockpit as we are entering into, so our major competitor in this segment is Vestion, who is, you know, a very uh, large player in India. So what, what kind of competition you are seeing or what you have is, have done any comparator analysis in this thing when you are entering into the new e cockpit segment? Because, uh, uh, you know, for a long time, the story is working in this thing. And the, the profitability, that's why I asked earlier question about the profit margin or the margin part. So their margin is very less than they are more into the you know, electronics part, entering into the electronics part. So what, what, do you think about this competition with Western? I will not name as just one competitor. There are multiple competitors in the area, yeah. but on Western, many more people are there. Uh, it, it is not the competition which matters. It is the solution, whatever you give it to the customer, is, is very, very important. For example, we started penetrating into the passenger vehicle segment starting from uh, 2020 onwards. And we have done fairly well in terms of our penetration into the TV segment. Uh, we have penetrated quite well into Tata Motors and also into CSA uh, in the last three years. And uh, we continue to offer innovative solutions, uh, benchmarking with uh, the, the, the global standards for a personal passenger vehicle. Yes, it is going to take some time for you to have a, a rapid penetration like what we have done uh, for the other segments of the market. Since we had a non-compete until 2020 uh, of entering into the personal passenger vehicle for driver information system, but in the last three years, I think we have done fairly well in terms of our market penetration into the personal passenger vehicle. And we have been getting opportunities from number of OEMs in the personal passenger vehicle for the driver information system. And as I told you during the beginning of the call, in the e-cockpit solutions also, we are working with uh, a, a large OEM. Uh, which is going to see the startup production from FI26. So that's where we stand. So we have not much concern about the competition in the sense that we have to keep looking at innovative solutions to the customer, so the customer keeps giving us opportunity to grow with them in this sense. How, how do we uh, differentiate our solution? As we, you know, I've been saying we have different solutions are out will providing the solutions differently. How, how this thing will, uh, you know, pan out, the solutions part? Because in, in passenger cars or maybe in commercial vehicle cars, solutions will be same, but the customers are uh, trying or what the customer desired is the same solution for every passenger vehicle, so every four vehicles, so every commercial vehicle. So what we are differentiating in terms of providing solutions or uh, the desired thing? Oh, yes. There are certain unique features that Recall can offer uh, to the customer, starting from our in-house uh, TMD. Okay. Uh, this has been our core strength, and in the previous earning calls, we have been explaining like 4.5% of our revenue is invested in our R&D year-on-year for the last five to seven years, and this is what is giving us results now. And uh, the flexibility that whatever we offer to the customer because of our in-house R&D uh, is one of the key highlights which is a differentiating factor to us. Not only that, we have got our own in-house um, machine building. We do our own lines. Uh, we do our own tools. Uh, we do our own plastic injection molding in-house. Uh, we do our own uh, PCB population. And not only that, we have got exclusive tie-ups with many of the uh, chip manufacturers as long-term contracts with them. Uh, so they offer the new generation of uh, ICs to click on. So there are multiple differentiating factors uh, which we can offer to the uh, customer as a solution, uh, which uh, will give uh, definitely a solution differentiation when compared to whatever is offered in the market. Of course, I will admit that yes, it is going to be 
uh, uh, a difficult task, but we are doing quite well as we speak in the last two years in terms of market penetration in the uh, Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Very helpful. Thank you. Thank you. Our next question is from the line of Khush Nahar from Ikrium. Please go ahead, sir. Yeah. Hi. Uh, thanks for the opportunity, sir. So I just had one question. Uh, what is the update on the acquisition that we were eyeing in the non-auto space? Uh, on the acquisition part, uh, as soon as we are able to get into some kind of concrete uh, listing, I will let you know it is too early for us to talk about it. Uh, as soon as we have some uh, firm information, we will definitely keep you posted on that. Thank okay. you. Thank you. Our next question is from the line of Baljandra Vasant Shinde from Kotak Life. Please go ahead. Uh, sir, uh, regarding uh, uh, one order, uh, would like to know. know uh, one of your peers uh, has said that they uh, they have started supplying clusters to Tata uh, uh, Motors. Uh, so, what will be the difference? Uh, what part we supply and uh, uh, are we seeing any dip in that revenues uh, over, over the next one to two years? Oh, no, not really. As I told you, that there are a number of uh, players in this market, and the competition will continue to be there. Uh, why in Tata Motors? In across all the customers, there are there are competition, and we have been growing um, in our business. Uh, though uh, number of competitors are there. Uh, as I told you, we keep giving innovative solutions to the customers and keep growing in this segment. So even if there is going to be one competition, I'm sure that with more innovative solutions, whatever we are offering, we will keep growing with that. Got it. So there is no impact on uh, Tata Motors revenue currently? Absolutely no. We have been growing with Tata Motors continuously. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Our next question is from the line of Piyush Jain, an individual investor. Please go. Sir, just want to know uh, any new customer or any new model, something which you have won in this quarter? Uh, uh, Mr. Piyush, you would have seen uh, in, uh, in my presentation uh, that only in Q3 alone, the last three months, uh, we have launched a number of driver information system, uh, which is uh, during the presentation which I showed you. Uh, just to repeat, a couple of weeks back, Hero Motor Corp has launched uh, a new range of uh, motorcycles, uh, 125cc premium extreme, and also they have launched a 440cc Maverick uh, a couple of weeks back, and uh, we are very proud suppliers of both the instrument clusters for their launches. And with Tata Motors, uh, the new uh, range of EV punch, which have been launched, uh, we have uh, provided the solution on the driver information system. Uh, what I'm talking is only just in Q3, uh, what we have done as launches during the last three months. And uh, for the IC vehicle of punch, we have launched a, uh, a new driver information system with switch mobility, which is a EV subsidy of Ashoka and we have launched the driver information system. And as I told you, uh, with Daimler, uh, we have launched a state of our driver information system for their new range of trucks and buses. And we also have won the uh, Best Technology and Innovation Award from Daimler during Q3. Okay. Sir, my, my question was specifically to this uh, are we in touch with uh, Hero Motocop for Harley Davidson 440 or something? Yes, or this, this uh, uh, thing is based on the Harley Davidson platform, yes, you're right. Uh, so the, this cluster, whatever has been launched, is based on that platform. This Maverick 440 is uh, Harley Davidson, same thing, or it's a different model? Uh, it is not, actually. Uh, Harley Davidson is, is, is different. I'm only talking about... Uh, uh, the Maverick, both are completely different. So Harley Davidson US, if you ask me, we do export a number of products, a range of products to Harley Davidson. 
ओके एंड डोमेस्टिक बजाज हीरो वन सॉरी कैन आई जस्ट हैव योर क्वेश्चन रिपीटेड या आई जस्ट वॉन्ट टू नो आर वी सप्लाइंग फॉर हीरो इंडियन वर्जन और वी आर इन टॉक विद दैट We are not supplying to the India hardware itself. No. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. That's my question. Thank you. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. I now hand the conference over to management for closing comments. I will uh, request our CFO to give the closing remarks. over to here thank you thank you ladies and gentlemen for joining the call this quarter was a good quarter we performed pretty well and customer support was there suppliers were pretty supportive so we feel q3 same we are expecting for q4 thank you so much for joining us for this call we can we can end the call thank you so much ladies and gentlemen thank you on behalf of research bytes corporate services private limited that concludes this conference thank you for joining us and you may now disconnect your lines